Hey everyone, welcome to another eBay warehouse update show. Um, we're going to talk to you about what sort of progress we made, how it's going, and what the near future is going to look like. So welcome to the show. Or as tonight looks like, the Blair Witch Prof sales show. It does look a little dark in here. We only have one light mm -hmm. on, and I don't know if that's much of a problem or not, but and if I look at it, it kind of blinds me. I just noticed that. So don't look at the light. Don't go to the light, Carolyn. Stay away from the light, Carolyn. <clears throat> anyway, uh, Poltergeist reference there for those of you who remember that movie. Welcome to the Prof Sales YouTube channel. I am Prof Sales, and we talk about being. Oh, I'm sorry, you are. <laughs> I'm just a bystander. I'm just sitting over here. I'm just Ask Garin. And we talk about being a reseller, um, being in business for yourself, selling on eBay, Amazon, e commerce platforms, your mindset, staying positive, all kinds of things, and building a cool community here. Right. And we work 24 hours a day. So late night with you guys, because that's how it just sort of fell. We're today. having date night with you guys because somebody doesn't feel that good. Somebody's got a case of the Mondays. <laughs> but anyway. Um, no, it's not like I've been working in a warehouse all day. We, well, that's, yeah, we, so we're glad you're here. First of all, first things first. <laughs> <laughs> There's a live chat going on right now. And normally we come on at two o'clock Eastern Standard Time, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. But today we just couldn't do it. Well, because sometimes we work. Yeah. And we didn't want to take the the uh, the time off um, to do the show, quite honestly, because it was not a great um, time for us to do that. Where are you going there? I'm on the we're on the couch. Are you okay? Yeah, I fell into the whatever. <laughs> but um if you want to leave a question or comment after the show post, go ahead and please leave it down below. And also consider uh, hitting the like button if you enjoy the content. You can even do that right now. There's helpful links down below. Um, you can follow. We've started an eBay warehouse playlist. There's such a thing. There is such a thing. And the playlist is, we're trying to chronicle this journey, but I got to tell you guys, it is hard to chronicle this journey because... You're busy doing stuff and you feel like you can't stop to video it or take a photo, but um, we are going to um, we are going to show you some photos of some of the some of the progress we got done today. I think we did pretty well. We did. And, you know, that once the momentum got going, uh, it didn't make sense to stop. Like we weren't even going to stop for lunch. But somebody since we're pointing out things about people today. Somebody gets a little hangry when they don't get lunch. That's true. I do get hangry and there's just no need for that. So we might as well get food. That's what we've all learned in this family. But <laughs> the Jason, so, Jason must eat. Jason must eat. It's true. Food is food is important. It's it's a source of energy. It, it sustains us. There's, it's a thing. But um, just wear a GoPro on your head all day. Yeah, we could do that, Ninja. That's actually not a bad idea. But um, I think it would annoy me. I would probably throw the thing in the wall after a while. I would be laughing so hard. It wouldn't. I mean, the laughter would be good, but really? Yeah, she would just, I walk up and it looks like I'm getting ready to go down in the mine. <clears throat> dig out some coal. Um, <laughs> can I move my eBay store to the Prof Warehouse? Of course you can. You're all welcome. Aww, who uh duncan that's gonna duncan. be tough duncan because um, aren't you like a million miles away yeah that's gonna be a little tricky hey though seriously duncan i found some old letters and some old stamps today and i thought of you so sometime after this weekend um when i can take photos of just those i'm gonna send them to you yeah i mean we we found all sorts of things and mm -hmm. today was uh today was a good day um today I guess today is technically like day seven or eight, maybe, of since we really started getting on this warehouse project in some ways. Okay. You think it's more than that? It feels like... Um, we haven't actually <laughs> been in the warehouse working eight straight days, but we have been doing stuff towards it um, for probably eight days. Yeah, about eight days or eight so. Eight days a week. That's don't, a song. We don't want to get a copyright strike, so don't sing the Beatles. Because it was um, so close to yeah, the original sounded very version. Close. It was exactly like them if they mm -hmm. had a female member. Isn't this great? It's nice for people to see us in our pajamas with our herbal tea. I'm not in my pajamas. Well, one of us is in our pajamas. But you know, it's like, what is it? You take your what's off your, um, like when you get casual, what's that? What's that phrase? Like you take your something off. 
Uh, it'll come to me like two o'clock in the morning, whatever. Somebody help Karen out. I don't know what she's talking about, but um, that's that's nothing that's new for me. Nothing I new. Usually don't. But today was a day where we um, we really so our goal here is for those of you who don't know, we're moving into this warehouse, but we need to move some things out of the warehouse, and some of the things are going to get thrown away. Some are going to get donated. Some are going to be sold locally. And some are going to be sold on eBay, Amazon, you know, places like that. So today was all about trying to get um, some of the stuff in there ready to be sold. Right. Um, and one of the things that's tough, guys, when you have a big heaping mound of, shall we call it a death pile, for lack of a better term, although it really isn't a death pile. It's a life pile. Oh, I like that. Um, yeah, so it's a life pile. It's just accrued over a life. Okay. So <clears throat> one of the things that's tough about that when you have a big pile of stuff is you have to take the time to sort of go through it. Well, hold on. Go I ahead. Think, I think the toughest part of the big pile, and I think a lot of people can relate to it, is getting started. And each of us, uh -huh. except for you, you're perfect. You don't struggle with the that first That is not step, true. I'm nearly perfect. Each of us has struggled in some way with our, you know, how to eat an elephant. And Ben is, you know, he's struggling <coughs> with this big mountain of baseball cards. How many thousands of cards does he have there? Like a million. It's, no, it's not a million. It's a lot of friggin' cards. <laughs> She's like, it's a million. I've counted. But, you know. It's a lot like, of cards. Like, he's like, I don't even know how to do it. And, and he did, a, like, today... He did because it was his lifetime of his parents, you know, collecting things that we would sell one day, collectibles, card sets, blah, blah, blah. So he spent the day today, that's a word, blah, blah, blah. So he spent the day today, um, you know, picking out things that he's going to sell locally. He's going to sell some of the stuff on eBay. And he actually, it was kind of cool because here he was, you know, uh, checking comps and checking solds and checking, you know, and kind of looking up where he was. And he's got probably a good size mountain that he wants to sell locally. Because, yeah. Because then his mom won't charge him fees from eBay, right? Because, you know, that's not part of the package deal. But he didn't know where to get started. And it's a lot. And he finally did. And he jumped in. And I think he feels pretty good about it. He needs to own it. If he's going to make the money, he's certainly got to put in the sweat, right? Oh, yeah, sure. And, you know, same thing for me. It was this big and same thing for your part of the warehouse that you're helping with. So, yeah, I mean, one of the tough things about things like uh, sports cards is they're in different states, so to speak. Like you have some that are in packs, some that are entire year sets that have never even opened, mm -hmm. and then some that are loose. And trying to kind of navigate all three of those different states of the cards is difficult. And we are definitely not card experts. We're not even card amateurs. So um, I don't I don't even know everything he's got there. We it's tough because we kind of need somebody to tell us what they are and their worth. But that brings up a whole other set of questions. But we really need somebody to buy them. <laughs> so <clears throat> but um anyway. Uh, I don't know Clarence Singe if he has 2006 tops turkey red baseball cards. I'm not sure. Send um, me a note. Send me an email and I'll look. Because yeah. the chat will go away and I'll I can't even see it from here anyway. But send me a note and I'll I'll make sure that we look the next time we go. Yeah, and Duncan says put the cards on eBay auctions, which I guess you're saying Duncan the whole lot of them. But you know I don't know how we would do that or how we'd ship them. They'd be pretty. We'd have expensive to put them on a pallet. They would yeah, they have to go like light freight for sure, I would yeah. think would be the cheapest way. Um, sell off the sets first to lighten the load. Yeah, and we could do that too. Mm -hmm. And maybe we will do that. I mean, I it's tricky. Um, we would love to just sell them all in one fell swoop and be done with them. But that's, not, that's definitely not the way to maximize the value. Mm -hmm. And um, But you got to weigh that off versus taking the time to go through and looking up and figuring out and Man, when you start talking about thousands of something, um, that is tough. That takes a while. Um, so. And, you know, you have a motivated 17, almost 18-year-old that's saving up to buy a car. So it's Right, but like even his motivation has a, a limit. Hmm. I mean, you know, that's... No, no, but what I'm saying is he's... Yeah, he wants, he wants the, the... What is it? The quick, slow nickel, quick dime. He wants to... Or wait, quick He dime. wants that fast nickel. Yeah, that's what he wants. <laughs> Exactly. What's your time worth? Justin says. Yeah, exactly. And mm -hmm. I, 
And we could go through all those cards and they could all be worth a penny each for all I know. And it would just be a waste of time. But anyway, um, so that's going on. And Karen's trying to get her stuff ready to be sold. We're planning to have our first warehouse sale next weekend. We absolutely have to shoot footage, go live, oh, do yeah, something. You that would be cool. We could do that. <laughs> Again, It'll be chaos. As with, we'll do it. as with everything with us, there is a first and a last time potentially for everything. Right? Yeah. So raise your hand or vote in the if you if you want to see the warehouse sale live next weekend. How boring would that be? That would be pretty boring. Like, what would you really get out? Almost of that? as boring as those people that do those like all day listing challenges. But anyway, <laughs> um, yeah. So next weekend we're planning on doing our first sale. And it's going to be the first of many because it's going to take more than one. And we're going to have to make some tough choices on some stuff. Yeah. We're going to have to get rid of some things that probably have value at some point just to gain the space to yeah. put things there we know have value. Well, and once we <clears> just <throat> agree that the space, the space has the most value versus something that's been sitting in a warehouse for, you know, God knows how long. Like, right, right. The space is the most valuable commodity. Something, you know, the... And already we've had to, you know, I, I already had my mom, my sentimental mommy conversation with you guys a couple of days ago. Um, and I've had to let some, some stuff go. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, credit card payments from folks. Nah, we could do it. I have a square readership, uh, square reader. I could do it. So I Cash guess we could is do it. King. Cash is King. Um, we will definitely be, we will definitely accept cash. We'll accept Bitcoin. So, uh, Red Neckerson's resales. Thank you so much for the super chat. Really appreciate it. Uh, he's a great friend of the channel and is always there with um, the dollar seventy seven. I missed. I missed that when I don't see it, and I'm like, man, where's he been? But thank you so much for that. Really appreciate the super chat. Um, cash only warehouse. So yeah, I think you got to do cash, and it's tricky because um, <clears throat> the warehouse only has one, one way to come in, and then you have to go back out that way. There's a dock, but you there are no kick, steps down the dock. We could kick people off the dock. We could. We could just push them off, and you know, it could be like Monty Python, like what is your quest? And if they fail, we just kick them into the chasm. See who got that reference. Um, but anyway, when they it, come to the bridge. Oh, you got it. <clears throat> so uh, Hank's gonna come organize. Yes. Hank, Perfect. don't joke. You need to come see us anyway. You're not that far away. That's true. That's true. So we we did a lot of uh, moving things around to get the um, to get them ready to be sold. We one thing we did. Let me see if I got a good photo of this. Um, I might. Let me see if this is a good photo of this. I'm not sure. Nope, that's not the one I want. Um, so only we can see this right now. Yeah, only we can see this right now. That's um, actually a great picture. Yeah, I was trying to show a good photo of the tables in the middle. Um, so, <laughs> well, I mean, it's better than nothing. So one of the things we're going to do guys, I'm going to share with you a couple some screen shares. We'll do some more here in a moment <clears throat> is this one. This is one of the shots I took today. Um, you can see here that we have, um, we have all these shelves on the side of the wall and our plan is, is to fill those with only things that are going to be sold during the warehouse sale. You can see we got a lot of empty room there. And then we're going to run these tables down the middle of the warehouse as we go. Um, so that's pretty cool. And uh, let me show you a little bit wider shot. Actually, you can see them oh, a little better. better. You can see. Um, and these shelves up here in the right-hand side of the frame are going to be used for display temporarily as well. So we'll be able to run like a lot of stuff down there and through the middle. And over the left side, you can sort of see this little thing jutting out. That's actually, um, we're going to run more tables down that side too. So people will be able to walk like three different kind of distinct areas and go through and, and buy things from them. So we're kind of excited about that. So we'll show you some more photos here in a moment. We can't show all the photos at the beginning, right? No. So, um, but yeah, that's, um, kind of what we, kind of what we're, we're looking at. We've basically cleared out today. We, we basically have, the, the warehouse is right around 1,500 square feet, just so you know. And what we kind of got cleared out today for the most part and set to sell in equals about 1,000 square feet, roughly. So we're, we're kind of got two-thirds of it 
uh, ready to, to sell and organize and get things gone. And then once those things are sold and or gone or and then whatever's left for eBay or Amazon or what have you, um, we will we will take that space and that will be the beginning of our inventory space. So a thousand square feet is is basically pretty close to being uh, ready. Wouldn't you say? Yeah, it's it's just a matter of I think we could go back and spend <clears throat> one more day and have it all portioned out and shelved up and out and. And all that stuff. That's cool. Ooh, Knight said that was a 300 reference. It was not 300, Knight. I'm sorry. You got to go back much further than that. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, we will be using that space, basically that entire thousand square feet at the beginning for the sale, for selling, to getting ready things. Um, you know, so it's kind of like we're we're doing a lot of dual purposes at once, wouldn't you say? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, we said that it was going to be a labor of love work and pro yeah everything is happening in concert sometimes more cacophony than desired yes, See, yes. i got words yes um you need to find a place to hang that youtube silver play button <laughs> yeah when i get that sure is everything officially out of the house no justin it's not we we actually have not moved anything into the warehouse yet that's inventory yet we can't um we felt like it even though we're having to go there and spend some time, we we felt like if we started doing that right now, it would just be in the way. Um, we want to make sure we get a good cleaning. We get everything prepared before we move it in. And we have as much stuff out of the way as possible. You know, one of the hardest things when you're moving, I think, and I think it's a mistake a lot of people make, and I've made it before, but I've gotten better at it over the years, is you want to get rid of everything you can before you move it. I mean, because if, you, if you're just going to end up getting rid of it when you get it to your new place, you're moving it twice, you know, move it once and move it out. Whereas I think we're trying to do that with this. Like we don't want to be moving stuff around to bring inventory in and then have to move it all again to move, to get it back again. I'd rather just be able to move the inventory in. If we can get this thousand square feet set up, we'll be in good shape. And here's a thought. We have an idea right now and it kind of changes, changes, but we have an idea right now of how we, envision the space how it's going to end up like inventory jean inventory is going to go here shoes are going to go here hard goods are going to go here etc cetera, etc cetera. um processing shipping is here and then we're going to make this everybody knows really cool photo section right but we need it to be empty because here's the thing even though we have these grand ideas i'm not even sure that as fabulous as they are that they're going to stick you know what i mean so once it becomes empty we can kind of it's a clean slate so we'll be able to, you know, what was that movie? We, the McDonald's movie where, oh, they, the where they, where they chalkboard it out or they use chalk on a tennis court and that's yeah. how they refined their systems and their efficiencies on a tennis court with chalk and 10 employees all day long. But we can kind of get a feel for, you know, maybe the photo area won't work well here. And it's right. not to say even once we get it all, we'll move it around anyway, but you know, we might even change our ideas on how we think it's going to play out even now. Yeah, let me um, let me show you to the um, I'm going to show you the section where um, some of Ben's stuff is actually already set up here that he is going to be mm. moving out. And so I'll show you this photo. This was what I was trying to show you a minute ago. I just didn't couldn't find the photo. But this is actually some of Ben's stuff. And if you look here in the back of this photo, guys, you see all these. Oh, there you go. I don't know if you can see my pointer or not on the screen. You may not be able to, but there's a bunch of totes back there. There's a ladder on the wall and there's a bunch of totes. And those totes and down and out to the front, that is all baseball and football cards. Et cetera. Um, and some fantasy stuff in there some, too, we found. Right. So he's got, that's basically the extent of the collection. So who knows how many is in there? It's, it's thousands, but you know. Yeah. It like goes under the table, on <clears> top of the table like times three and then in front of the table times four or five as well. Right. That's all cards. And then the front table here in, in the, in the uh, foreground of the photo, that's just some things like some toys and stuff. We'll use these boxes just to set them up and make a little display. And um, so this will be able, easy for people to go through and shop. And of course we're gonna have to think about pricing and all that. Um, uh, let's see. What other photos do we have here? Um, Not okay. that one. Cause I'm telling you you're number one. No, not that one. Um, do we already show this one? 
I think we already showed this one, didn't we? Yeah, it's yeah. okay. I see it again. Already showed that one. <clears throat> um, yeah. So this is. Oh, let me show you the uh, the shelving units and sort of the back end of the thousand square feet so far. So you can see here. This will kind of be like the back side of it. And these shelves you're looking at. I think Hank mentioned these. We don't see any signs of sagging in this this no. uh, press board, Hank. Um, there could be, but they've been in here for at least a couple years. Uh -huh. So I would think they probably would be by now. Um, but those shelves will be really nice to use. And we're hoping to use those to, um, for now, they'll be used to, to display and sell things as we get things out of the warehouse. But who knows? then after that, we, they could be incorporated for uh, product. They're really nice. They're four feet. They're heavy duty, four feet long. I think they're maybe 18 inches or two feet deep. I can't remember like 18 inches so nice and, shelves and what's neat about this shot and i guess folks that are just seeing like this very pristine open area here for the first time what's cool about this mm -hmm. is up until today that was this um clog right like all of that mm -hmm. stuff had stuff on it it was in the middle it had like it was this big island that was just sort of in the way of everything and now not only did we clean it off but we put it to put it to work put it to use right 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 that's exactly right and um Let's see what other shots we've got we could share here. Uh, are you going to show them all or are you going to be stingy? No, I'll show this one. What the heck is that? <clears throat> so this area right here, I know it's a little bit of, you got you to <laughs> kind of see a few things here. But all this furniture and stuff will be out of here. And this will be where our photo, photo area will be. So imagine basically right in the middle of this shot up against that wall. That will be where the photo area will be. So it's almost cleaned out. So. Um, I think we have like one or two more photos. Which, Are you going to save those for the? Well, I'm, it's not that I'm saving them. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saving them. You're pacing yourself. It's been a long day. I get it. I got to tell you something, guys. Like moving into a warehouse um, is exciting and it's a lot of work. Um, and you could definitely just keep work, work, working at it until you got like everything perfect. And I know there's going to come a point where we're going to say, all right, it's good enough. You know, we're going to have to like, all right, move stuff in, start, you know, implementing what we're doing. And that and that point's coming. I mean, that's still probably a couple weeks away, I would guess. What yeah. you say, mm -hmm. more or less. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's still it's still a couple weeks away. But, you know, you have to reach a point with this stuff like mm -hmm. I'm realizing where you just there is no perfection. Like you could literally just like, well, what about if we did this? And what about if and I'm, I'm notorious for doing that? So I have to be careful um, to do that. Well, and we talk all the time about what's the the biggest hurdle, what's the one biggest thing that keeps you from moving forward, and it's second guessing. It's constantly reevaluating the status quo, right? right? So at some point, it's just we're just going to have to agree that it's going to work. It's going to work well enough because you know we've got some pretty good systems in place, right? Yeah, for sure. And putting them into play in this warehouse, I mean, there's going to be some growing pains because we're switching spaces and we've, all right, I hope everybody's sitting down because we've actually even discussed a different inventory system. <laughs> so sad. Like <laughs> here I am nodding off to sleep, but we could do this thing where we use bins and we could number them this way and we can put them in this and we could do it. Yeah. It's, it might happen. It might happen. And Long dramatic. All right. So side. long story short, and I think I mentioned this <laughs> in the last video, is for those of you know that we sell a lot of jeans, and the jeans are set out on these black shelves, and they're stacked seven high, six stacks per shelf, 42 on a shelf, a 30 by 18 inch shelf, which is pretty darn good. If you can get 42 pair in that amount of space, you're doing pretty well. Gold star, <clears> the gold problem star. is, is I'm nervous about setting those out in the open, the way they're stacked right now in a warehouse that doesn't have air conditioning it doesn't have the same climate control that a house does i'm very nervous about doing that for all kinds of reasons obviously uh, ho uh -oh. hold on what are you doing rookie you got to be in the right thing here there you go now you can type hold, hold on it's still weird up here I don't know what this at, at least i didn't turn off the broadcast she's in here typing on stuff and it's not the same. all right so i've got these jeans setting out and i'm worried if we leave them setting out like that in the warehouse just if i move them from there to here to there that we'll get mold 
We'll possibly get moths. We'll get other infestations. We could get all kinds of things on those clo that clothing. Dust, dirt. Yes, people are saying that. So snakes. All right, probably not snakes, Skip, but okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what kind of what no, kind of in, stuff are you in, holding? in Florida, maybe. Well, but yeah, yeah. we don't skip. We don't have an issue with um, snakes here. I saw crickets though. Warehouse cat fur. And I thought that um, crickets were like you know crickets like nobody's saying anything. Like I didn't know they meant like crickets. real crickets. Yeah, could be. Yeah. Well, uh, the white fish is that what they're called? Silver silverfish. No, fish. Silver fish. White fish is something you eat. Silverfish. Um, we do have black widows. They're pretty all over the place around here. No, oh, they're not. Yeah, they're they're around. But we don't have an issue. <coughs> but with them. we'll see them every now and then. So what we thought about doing is putting them in bins. The problem with that, there's a couple problems with that. One is you can't get as many per shelf that way, which means you have to have more shelves or some other bin system. Two, we thought about putting them in plastic. Putting clothing in plastic, I am getting different conflicting reports. Hmm. And I know some people who do it that way and they've had no problems. And then I've read of other people who've put clothing in plastic and had all kinds of problems. The problem comes in if you seal up a piece of clothing in plastic and there's moisture in there, it can promote mold. It can promote mold growth. And there's no way, even if you quote unquote, take all the air out, I've even read that's not the best thing to do because clothing can take a while to bounce back to its natural shape. <clears throat> if it sets in a if it sets in a vacuum seal back for six months, it can take up to six months to regain its shape, which I found crazy when I read that. And I went, mm -hmm. really? Um, so how'd you go? I can't do it again. I don't think I do it again. And, and the <clears throat> and moisture, I mean, you're not always going to be able to detect the moisture. Like if there's um I don't know, something like maybe some curtain climber got a cookie crumb on it or something. You know what I mean? Like there's different things, right. biological or oh, otherwise, yeah. that can get on the fabric and you might not know. That's all I'm saying. Maybe yeah. you wash it and it doesn't dry all the way and then you put it in there with the best intention. It's clean, but, you know. And we can get pesticides, that's true, but it's not even just pesticides. It's, it's moisture. <clears throat> I mean, and taking the moisture out of a 1,500 square foot warehouse with... 20 foot ceilings uh is no small task um and i don't know how much humidity is in there we've got to take that thing over there right now this time of year probably very low it's winter the humidity outside is under 30 percent no problem would be no problem at all i've read as long as it doesn't get above about 55 percent mm -hmm. you're good but in the summer this is the south i don't know i don't know how humid it's going to get in there so i am concerned about it and we kind of need to address it and figure it out now. My, my buddy Luke, who also lives in Charlotte, had a storage building um, for the good, the better part of the last year or two. And he kept things in plastic, in storage totes, in the storage building and had no issues. Of course, he hasn't gone through every single item and checked either. Mm -hmm. There could be someone there that has some issues he may not know about. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, he's had no issues. Um, so it's very possible that I will not have them either in this area. The humidity will not get so high, especially inside, that we'll have to worry about it. But it's a problem. Um, and yeah, we can run a dehumidifier, but it's not going to do much good in that big of a space. I mean, mm -hmm. that's a huge space. You would need a big dehumidifier, and that's going to be a big bill. Somebody mentioned the other day that a dehumidifier costs 5 to $7 a day in electricity. That's a lot. I mean, that's, you know, that's 150, 210 bucks a month just for to dehumidify the space. So we're looking at other solutions. I'm looking at like just putting things in bins and putting things in the bin to take out the moisture, like the des desiccants, you know, the little silica gels. Mm -hmm. You can put charcoal in there. Kitty litter can be used to take moisture out of the air and you just replace it. Oh, what's your um, pro tip? How you rejuvenate those thingies, remember? Oh, oh, it's silica gel. Yeah. Yeah, you can actually take the silica gel and take out the little crystals, apparently, and put them on a cookie sheet, put them in your oven at 300 degrees for about three hours, and they'll dry out. No you risk of no risk of deadly fumes or anything? Well, I don't know. I, I don't know about that part. So don't so if you do that and your whole house is filled with deadly fumes, don't blame me. I read it on the internet, and everything on the internet's true. As we both drink it at the same time. Anyway, <clears throat> but we are um, working on it. 
Uh, keeping fans going is a great idea. Keeping the air circulating, mm-hmm. that will help. We probably will do that anyway. It'll probably be hot enough to deal with that. Put in solar panels on the roof. <laughs> um, oh, that's what, that. Remember Ben was talking about solar panels. If if uh, arm if uh, the world ended, where would you live? Oh, I'd live underground. Well, how would you get? Oh no, what what yeah, was it? The nuclear. Panels. We watched that nuclear. Uh, yeah. Documentary. And so there'd be this ash cloud and, and we're like, well, how would you power your underground bunker? And he's like, well, with solar panels. Well, the sun wouldn't really. It, they'll still work even during the clouds. Right. But um, it was, but it was a funny. very funny conversation. Uh, so. Oh, um, more pictures. Oh, there's his foot. Do we have more pictures? Let's that see. One, that, one, that one. And I don't know. We didn't... Well, we'll just go through. Oh, we didn't show that one. Then... Eh, well, that one's not that great. Well, you know. Anyway, um, so we'll we'll run through the rest of the photos real quick, guys. Some of these we've already shown, but if you see them again, then oh well. Uh, we have like little again. videos and stuff too. I have, can you show little videos when you do a screen share? Um, I'm I, I don't think you can really do that with this. All right, so there's a video we showed you guys earlier. Here's the one of some of the stuff we're gonna be set up for the sale. Um, here's the other wall. Oh, the yeah. uh, that's straight across from the wall we just showed you. So and the tables in between. Um, here's some other fixtures and stuff. They're going to have to go away eventually, but we're going to use these shelves for the moment. Lots of Santa Clauses. Yeah, yeah. lots of Santa Clauses everywhere. I think we already showed you guys this photo in the middle. Um, there is a uh, four-wheeler that's <laughs> for sale as well as Ben's leg. Toddler. Ben's leg is for sale? Ben's leg Does is for sale. Does he know his just leg his, is for Just sale? his leg, just his right leg. He figures he doesn't need it. Toddler um, bed, lots of furniture. Yeah, this furniture is all going to be for sale as well. So we're hoping somebody will, will be interested in There's some filing that. cabinets, I see. Yeah, some filing cabinets. They're going to go, they're going to be on sale as well. And then that last shot of the uh, Thoris. I need to take more photos. Sorry, I didn't take a lot today. But um, and we've got, we've I've got, got so some on my phone too that we haven't. Because I took oh, some yeah. from up top on the, on that roof thing. Oh, did you? I didn't even know that. Yeah. But um, yeah, so it's going to be, uh, it's a slog going through a wear. I mean, I got to tell you guys, like, uh, question, did you have to have a fire inspection city permits? The building is inspected. We're not going to be running a retail business out of this. I mean, we may have a warehouse sale, but that's not really a business for the business model. Um, yeah, no, it's not going to be a, an open door kind of thing. We're going to do like purgy kind of stuff, but it's not going to be on the regular. And you're right. The business um, has already been fire inspected and we have fire extinguishers and right. that was already in place. Yep. And we are ready to uphold the existing protocol. I like that protocol. Something to decorate the gray walls. Inventory. Lots and lots of jeans. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Yeah, we really can't do... The walls are cinder block. So... We're limited to what we can hang on it. I don't even think by the lease we can paint them. Like I think they probably have not. to, you know. And we can, we're not going to really be attaching any of the fixtures to to the wall, probably. So that's another thing to think about. Yeah, and one thing we were talking about tonight, guys, is you know our goal is to push up our listings this year to twenty five hundred listings, and roughly two thousand jeans and five hundred shoes. But one of the things we talked about doing is, um, just so you guys know, is we may start filtering in more new. Mm-hmm. Um, because here, here's the thing. Um, we New items come with their own set of challenges, right? I mean, new items are usually more expensive. They bring in a total dollar amount that's higher, but it's a lower margin. But you don't have to... Sometimes you can use stock photos, things like that. You don't usually have the defects and so on and problems that you have with pre-owned items. So we are thinking about moving towards more new items on eBay this year. Um, we would need, we, we estimated that if we, if we bought all 2,500 jeans, let's say new. And I mean, and when I say new, I mean ones that have been marked down or the occasional new with tags you find at a thrift store, although thrift stores would no longer be our primary sourcing if we do that. Well, no, and back up just a a little baby step. So one of the other parts of, I think, most reseller evolution is that we're trying to raise our ASP, or better known as average selling price, right? So a natural step was made, made sense to us was to move toward new. Right. Because really with 
with used jeans, we're only going to be able to sell them for so much. Even right. the home run jeans that sure. we find, and we find a good many. Sure. I mean, we're going to reach a point where- That's reality. Yeah. So it made sense for us to start moving toward more new -y kind of stuff. So we're looking to do that, but it's expensive. I mean, last year, <laughs> our average cost of goods between shoes and jeans was just a tad over $4. Um, I estimate, and it's kind of a guess right now, but I estimate that if we were selling only new jeans that we found that were clearanced out and only new shoes that were clearanced down, I think our average cost could be 20 to 30 bucks. I mean, it could be that high. Mm -hmm. And even if it's the low end at $20 and you want to have, um, you know, 2,500 items at that price, mm -hmm. uh, what does that come out to? 10, 10 grand. I can't even do math. Tonight. Yeah. <laughs> $10. Uh, yeah. $10 would be, um, you know, $50,000, $50,000, um, for, your entire inventory, like if your entire inventory of 2,500 items was new and you were spending $20 an item to buy them, you would need to spend 50 grand on your inventory. That is no small amount for most resellers, including us. So <clears throat> if we shift towards these new items more, it's going to have to be a gradual shift. I mean, we we certainly cannot just say, oh, let's quit selling pre-owned and sell only new. I mean, it's new. It's going to take a lot of capital to do it. And it's going to be a process to go. And but the advantage is when you sell, when you're buying items for like $20 and $30, a lot of times you're selling for $60 or $70. Even though you're not making as much um, return on investment percentage, your margin goes down, your actual dollars goes up. Um, you know, because if you're selling a $20 item for $60, even after fees, you know, you're going to still have somewhere, it's going to, you're going to have somewhere around 48 bucks minus your 20 which is a $28 pre-tax um, profit before overhead and, and so on, which is great. Um, you know, and that's not quite as high of a margin as we had last year, but it'll still be actual, more actual dollars we'll get. And it may even be a little bit lower than that, but it's pretty close. So we're looking at that. Um, I think that we can, yeah, Jason can't do math. You must be tired. It was a long day. I mean, we spent about six good hours there. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. It was literally six good hours and we worked. There was no doubt about it. Like it was like just slogging through stuff. We took lunch and I was like, oh, is it over? <laughs> but it wasn't over. It was just more after the lunch. So um, we're looking at doing that. And I advise you guys to like always be looking for opportunities, I think, to raise your average selling price if it doesn't require a massive shift in your business. I mean, I feel really confident in my ability to go source new jeans and sell new jeans and to source and to mainly source new shoes, some new shoes. That's going to be a tougher one to learn, but I feel really confident I could go source new jeans and sell new jeans and make profit on them. If I was going off in a whole nother direction, a whole nother niche and going and buying new items, that would be a lot more challenging. Speaking of me. Oh, I thought I was going to get you to spit your water out. So um, when are we going to talk about what I've been doing? my listing stuff. You should talk about it right now. So I have a store, <clears throat> a baby store, um, and I haven't had any time to list any of the thingies on it. And I have a lot of thingies of my own and Ben's that need to be listed, but whatever. So I spent a good part of yesterday listing. And I think all told, I think, what was it like with drafts and redos and blah, blah, blah. It was like 13 or 14 things, right? Mm -hmm. And I've learned a lot. But what's really cool is I got eight things actually listed and I sold one. Cha-ching. My cha-chinger went off just as somebody's <clears throat> falling asleep. It was the funniest thing ever. And I was uh, like, and it was an offer, right? Like it was a make me an offer kind of thing. And it's it's almost one o'clock in the morning, right? And so it goes to Ching and, and Jason's like, uh, and I'm like, what do I do? What do I do? Cause my phone <laughs> has, my phone has only ever cha-chinged once before, once before, or was yeah, it? No, well, no, a couple of times, but it was in public. The first time it ever happened, we were in a goodwill with a group. Right. Um, and I just screamed and ran around the store like a little kid. She literally oh did. my God. Um, but I wanted to talk a, just a smidge about it. 
because for whatever reason, and I've got many, you know, I do some other things around here, um, but all of the things that I needed to tend to had sort of just gotten to the bottom of the to-do list, bottom of the to-do list. And I really felt good about spending that time and honing my lister skills. It was really cool. And I'm already learning like the whole niche idea, like there are so many efficiencies and good reasons to sell the same thing or roughly the same thing over and over again. Right. Um, because with my things, it's everywhere from clothing to purses to, which it was a $50 purse, by the way, not bad. Um, but my things are all over the place. Like it's this pair of shoes that'll go this way. So what I'm purposefully doing, I think I'm inflicting pain on myself on purpose, but I'm experimenting with all of it because we'll get questions sometimes, you know, about, well, what about this auction? Or what about if you do buy it now with this? Or have you done regional A or regional B? And so I found myself on purpose, you know, listing, like I have this one little tchotchke statue thing that I purposely put on an auction to see what will happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, and it then, was great. And then other things on buy it now. And I did some of them, you know, automatically say no and automatically say yes. So, you know, I, and a lot of you guys, I respect that you've been doing this for a really long time. And I just wonder, like, is anybody still having that kind of fun with it? Like it, like I really. Does anybody remember laughter? Does any, <laughs> I don't know that one. What is it? Somebody will know, I'm sure. But it's, um. You know, I'm sure I'll get burnt out too. Like, no, I'm just kidding. But there was a sense of like, I really enjoyed more than I thought I would and probably spent a little bit too much time as we do in the beginning anyway on the research part. Yeah, you did good though. You got you got a bunch of listings and you did double digit listings, right? Or close to that. Well, it only ended up netting because I have to redo. Oh, and another thing I learned, this is interesting, but um, you know, I'm the, the picture taker, right? And my pictures, a couple were... I will admit a little subpar. So mid list, I found myself um, going back to the photo room and just retaking like single shots in particular, because like this one purse is shaped funny and you really couldn't see it in the picture. Um, Jason was my uh, purse holder. Like holding this purse like this. She's like, yeah, if you could do this for every purse, I'm going, no. It was so no. funny. <laughs> you have to find of, a better way. He kind of held it. And then this other thing um, just, the way I took it out of the box and put it, it, it doesn't really do it justice. So now I'm going to have to go back. And, and I really felt, I really found myself a little bum today. I mean, I'm happy that we got all the things done at the warehouse that we did, right. but I lost a little bit of momentum. Like I woke up like ready to go. And let me tell you that package, that purse was papered up and thank you noted. And, <laughs> you know, Perfumed. It's no, like you took I it to the department store perfume. and got a gift wrap. But they don't even do I that anymore, do they? gift wrapped it and I sealed it with a kiss and I put a little smiley face. It's like, good <laughs> Lord. It started out like a pound and a half. And by the time she was done, it was like four pounds. That's not true. Not but true. so because, you know, and this is where it'll sort of, where we'll get busy, busy more than we are busy right now. But I mean, this is, it's a, it's a many fold mission, right? We have the existing store you're what is it like a super special store anchor store or something what is it what's your store it's a premium store premium store that's so just what ebay calls we it. Have, i don't call it that well but it's yours so jason has this premium store that the goal is and we're we'll get we're gonna get there 2500 2500 got it okay so we're gonna have to work a lot on that store that we've always talked about needing to uh give it a history sell things on it um, a lot of resellers will have that second store to sell other things, or maybe, you know, heaven forbid something ever happens to your original store, whatever. But the thought is that we'll use the second store um, for hard goods, and we're going to really concentrate on that right. Jason store <clears throat> as jeans and shoes and whatever else right, we right. morph into this year. Yeah, I mean, that's it was, it was great to see you sell it that quick, like in less than 24 hours. I was I was very surprised. I was surprised it sold that quick, to be honest. What that you. that one sold? But um, yeah. So uh, somebody asked earlier about what, how it would ship um, shoes, shoes, shoes in in the box. That's a great question, and I don't have a great answer. I 
for some weird reason, I thought about just like wrapping the whole thing in a couple layers of bubble wrap and putting it in a poly bag, but that probably wouldn't work. But I was like, I don't know, maybe it would work. Um, but there's got to be a way that people have done that. I mean, obviously, they're not going to fit in the U.S. Postal Service shoebox, quote unquote. It's not big enough to put the box in. <clears throat> so I need to think about that a little bit. And I don't know how important the box is for some people in some shoes. I know for like, I know for like sneakers and so on, it is important from what I understand. Mm -hmm. But I don't know in other types of new shoes if it is or not. So I need to do a little research there. If anybody's got any ideas on that, I'm more than open to them. Because the one we sold this jumbo pair of what were those brand new cleats? Like how big were those? They were like a 13 or something. Yeah, they're pretty big, maybe 13. That like we had to reinvent a box for those. Like because that was a Nike brand, right? And the it shoe was. box was huge. <clears throat> yeah, they were there. It was. It was a big box, you know. And I was like, hmm, what am I gonna put this in? So it's a great question. Maybe those regional boxes, uh, they won't fit the shoe box. Well, though. a lot of folks use FedEx. For what? Shoes. Um, oh, does FedEx have a box you can put the shoe box in though? That's the issue. Yeah, we wouldn't know. We don't use FedEx. We're just USPS people. So custom cut a box to go around the box. Yeah. And I hate cutting boxes, Troy. Ah, man, I'm telling you, you're right. You can do that. I just hate doing it. It's just a pain in the butt. Um, I would rather figure out a better solution for it. Maybe there is a better, maybe there's not a better solution. I don't know, but I'm going to, maybe I'll just only buy new shoes that people don't care about getting the box. <laughs> I'll be like, here you go. Here's your new shoes. <clears throat> oh yeah. Rac Rusted Raccoon says, and I thought about that too. Um, giving them the option to ship without a box. It cuts oh, down yeah. on the shipping. That's an interesting question, Rusted Raccoon. And then uh, that's that's a very interesting. And then technically you could use a shoebox to keep storing stuff. <laughs> That'd be funny. But you would have to be careful to remember it's not what's in there. Um, maybe you need a collectibles corner in your warehouse. No. Yeah, it's called my area. We don't need that. Collectibles? Collectibles? What? I got a whole pile of collectibles I'm trying to get from a lifetime of collectibling. Collectibles. Um, so <laughs> I just got a great look from you. I saw it. I could see it in the screen. I'm like, ah, oh, she's gonna give me she's gonna give me a look. Here it comes. <sighs> uh, we do not auction jeans, Mark. Mark? Yeah, I <clears throat> I have had I think I've auctioned maybe one pair, <laughs> maybe two. I don't typically I just don't feel like most jeans are auctionable. It's not they're not auctionable. I just don't think most people are looking to bid them up. So it's like, why auction them? I don't know. Auction slow movers? No, just price them to move. You can even, by the way, you can price them a good till cancel. By the way, I found a good till canceled uh, yesterday, and it was kind of by, <clears throat> it was kind of by chance. How did I find this? It, I had some sort of I had I had some sort of um, thing I typed on the spreadsheet that was wrong, and so I was looking back at a pair of jeans that um, had just ended, and so it was I was going to relist them, and I realized when I did that oh I know what it was I know what it was it wasn't that somebody had asked me a question about a pair of jeans and I don't remember what the question was it doesn't matter so I went upstairs to look at the jeans and answer the question because it was something I didn't have in the description. And I couldn't find them. And I went, what in the heck is going on? So I looked in my spreadsheet and I'm like, it shows he's sold back, you know, a, a month or two ago. So I go on eBay and sure enough, eBay shows them as active. Mm -hmm. And it also shows them as sold. And I went, what in the heck? And there's no way I had two of these. So it was one of those glitches. They've been a good deal canceled. They had ended and somehow gotten relisted, even though they'd already sold. Just eBay drives me crazy with those sorts of glitches. So I just ended them. Um, I ended the listing and, um, you know, that. But if that had sold again, I would have to cancel the order because I had already sold them. So be on the lookout for that stuff, guys. It's out there. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, let's see. Flat rate and padded flat rate will be as of Sunday with the new prices. Somebody put it on here. Oh, yeah, Skip, are you still there? Skip knows all they that. They are going stuff. up. I don't remember the exact price, but I guess I should know that by now. Just got some other things on the plate. You're just rolling in dough. You don't care. That is not true. Um, the newer ones are selling great. Our old jeans are stuck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and sometimes it goes like that. <clears throat> I guess we're picking better now. I mean, you're always going to be left 
theoretically with the items that don't sell as well or weren't great picks. It's kind of hard to know sometimes what the exact issue is, but those are going to be the ones you're going to be left with by definition because they weren't a great pick or the demand is not as high or the market is flooded or your pricing is wrong or any number of issues. So you're always, it's always going to seem like the ones that you've had for a while were not a good uh, buy on your part, but that's not always true. Sometimes it's just circumstances change. Uh, Karin, the pirate is very quiet. They're tired. Yeah, she is. Um, <laughs> Why do you even read it if you're just going to just... Arg! How's that? That's all I got. I'm pooped. And I have to get up at <clears throat> O-Dark 30 for a rugby tournament tomorrow in the sub-zero freezing temperatures because that's yes. what rugby players do. Yes. So, um, but anyway, guys, the warehouse is progressing. We're going to keep filling you guys in. Um, it's a lot of fun and it's also a lot of work. And we're going to try really hard next time we're there, hopefully Monday, uh, to do the show from yeah. there. We'll do another one there next week for sure. We did one earlier this week. We did on Wednesday mm -hmm. or was it Monday? I can't remember. They're all blending together, but we have a, a it's, it's time. We're kind of in our yeah. 11th hour. We have a week to get it all in order for set next Saturday. And the weather's going to be okay, so that's good. No snowmageddon. We're going to make $1 million next Saturday. Wouldn't that be lovely? No, we're not. That would but be we're going to move a I'd lot of stuff. I'd settle for 1000 1000 would be lovely. I'd be like, that's a good sale. We're going to we're gonna move a lot of stuff. And so hopefully we can, um, you know, have everybody have everybody over again and, and show you where we're, where we've come and where we think we're going to go with the plan. All right, guys. So that's going to do it for tonight. Um, we appreciate you guys coming out. Um, always good to talk to you guys. We had like about 100 people watching at one point. So that's amazing. Yeah. So what do you think about all that, Karin? We're so glad we could spend date night with you. If you um, smiled, smirked, or even learned one little thing throughout hmm. tonight, consider hitting the like button. Uh, that lets us know that you're paying attention because we're funny. How's that? Right. <laughs> And it's late and it's Friday and we're glad you could come. Thanks guys. We hope you have a great weekend and we'll see you really soon. I hope so. What do we say? I am Prof Sales. And I'm gonna, I was going to do happy sales to you. And I'm just as Karen saying and good, good sales, sales to, to you. you.